Hello everyone, I am Varad Ayamanan. Uh, I am a senior engineer uh, in the field of product development and currently working with Onward Technologies Limited, India. And I did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering from Anna University. I did my master's in defense technology, specializing in aerospace technology. And I have uh, six years of experience in the industry in product development and uh, CAE. I would like to explain about uh, theta projection creep model using uh, abacus subroutines. And uh, this is based on the constitutive equations developed by Professor Evans. So he has done a significant uh, contribution to creep analysis. So let me come to the use cases of this particular model. So this can be used for any isotropic metallic or alloy components which are subjected to high temperature, high stresses, uh, which typically includes industrial and aerospace gas turbine engine components as well as automotive engine components where the temperature and stresses are high and uh, nuclear reactor vessel components and typically any component uh, in the industry which uh, has high stresses and high temperatures and uh, where the creep mechanism is significant. So basically my model uh, can capture uh, both steady state as well as transient effects uh, as it is based on uh, internal state variables such as hardening, recovery and damage accumulation with time. So time effects, damage effects uh, can be uh, modeled in this system. So before going into the detail about my project, so let me start like why gas turbine blades as an example that I have taken, uh, why gas turbine blades fail. If you see, uh, the working condition of a gas turbine blade, uh, blades involves high temperature and high stresses and uh, here is a picture of a uh, static analysis of a single uh, disk of a turbine or blade of a turbine and it is showing one minus stress contour block and you can see the maximum stresses are near the root in a typical gas turbine blade static analysis and uh, we also know the general values for a wheel strength at a high temperature that gas turbine would operate is uh, much lesser than 1000 MPa but stresses here are going more than 1000 MPa but if you see practically in a failed component of a, a turbine engine you can see failures uh, not only at the root uh, but also at different parts of the blade and uh, we may be wondering why is this happening because uh, our strength of material says that uh, stress, wherever the stresses are high, their failures is more likely to occur, but uh, practical cases otherwise. So that is because uh, when the temp turbine entry temperature is uh, as close to 1400 to 1600 degree, uh, but the melting point of the material there would be uh, 1350 or 1500 max for a typical super alloy or uh, such materials which are used for a gas turbine blade. So here the point is the turbine entry temperature is very close to the melting point and uh, we know when the temperature increases mechanical properties of uh, material decreases. So it is a very critical situation that both stresses and temperatures are high. So the interaction between stress and temperature gives rise to thermomechanical phenomena which includes creep, low cycle fatigue high cycle fatigue and oxidation and corrosion as well so it is a combined effect of thermal and mechanical stresses or mechanical loads. We will go to the mechanism of creep before going further. So basically we have uh, three mechanisms uh, sub, uh, uh, mechanisms of creep. The first is the hardening which happens because whenever uh, stress is applied in a crystal, crystal structure uh, there are uh, back stresses developed due to compression or tension between uh, the slip planes and this back stress stresses the deformation and that leads to hardening of the material. It is basic not only for creep, it is there for any plasticity or fatigue mechanisms as well. But when temperature is applied to the material, this temperature provides activation energy to overcome this back stress and uh, have the dislocation mode. So basically uh, temperature will uh, cause moment of dislocations. On the left you can see that there are two dislocation or half slip plane, uh, half missing atoms uh, there and because of temperature the moment will occur if the activation energy is more than sufficient to cross this and uh, the material will get to lower activation energy state uh, that, that is lower internal energy state. This is what we call recovery or softening. So this is possible only with the application of temperature. And this leads to 
uh, loss of hardening as in uh, whenever stress is applied material will harden and whenever it recovers back means hardness is lost and the combined effect of this hardening and recovery is the damage uh, basically these half missing atoms or a slip plane uh, can also be conceived as uh, voids or creep voids we call it, uh, across the grain boundaries usually for uh, temperature cases uh, high temperature and ice cases it is the it is the mechanism of creep and uh, as time progresses because of continuous hardening and softening the voids coalesce each other and uh, they form a crack micro crack or uh, into the granular slippage or uh, into granular sliding uh, different mechanisms are there so grain boundary sliding so that leads to cracking of the material because of that. this is how it happens and uh, we can see a picture of uh, scanning electron microscope pictures of specimen which shows uh, how the material will be in the primary secondary and the tertiary stage you can see primary there are not much of a cavity of the antiplanar uh, slippage there and in secondary it starts to develop slowly and on tertiary uh, the crack will happen and uh, it will fail faster and uh, basically i have uh, written the subroutine in fortran based on the formulations given by evans professor evans and how this works is we will have the abacus ae solver standard solver uh, running parallelly with the user subroutine to any fortran compiler which could be intel one api and this parallel processing uh, is explained in this flow chart i'll just briefly uh, explain only the subroutine part and uh, what happens at the end of life so usually it is death and uh, slow painful death right so yeah in our case we can uh, simulate to simulated as element deletion and the slow and painful death as stiffness degradation that is degradation of the reduction of things modulus uh, after the element has uh, achieved its peak right so in um, modulus here it can be set to field one using a user defined field subroutine usd fld so here is how it is done so initially when uh, total life fraction or creep life fraction is zero uh, we can set the ens modulus to be uh, ens modulus initial ens modulus that is field is one code is validated uh, on a lot of conditions like 2d rectangular plane ens is condition 3d rectangular bar plane uh, strain and uh, sector um, as well as turbine blades and lot of different conditions in different load uh, boundaries conditions as well and uh, so here is a sample of what it means on a rectangular uh, simple rectangular plate where the stresses are uniform because stresses are uniform and temperature is constant in this case but taken for good validation creep strain is also almost uh, similar and uh, so this is the plot of equivalent creep strain that is c e e q with respect to time so if you remember the creep curve that is exponential creep curve it is the same so Uh, basically it has captured the primary stage secondary stage and tertiary stage this would have not been possible with power law or any other apparatus in built models so this is validated that uh, this eta projection equation in the code that uh, we have written it captures all stages of it also this is the plot of uh, internal variable that is hardening recovery and damage seconds so let us uh, discuss one by one so ce is the creep strain And let us say that initial value is zero, and uh, I am changing the slider to see how the creep strain is increasing. Principal creep strain is increasing. Uh, C E Q is the equivalent creep strain. This is a better measure than uh, creep strain, and uh, we can also see that is also increasing. And uh, uh, after a certain period of time, elements start deleting. Uh, that is also apparent from the model. You can see. and uh, we have the nodal temperatures uh, stresses one my sister you can see uh, at the end of static step it is close to 1000 uh, 13 uh, i mean 1130 some portion maximum and uh, minimum stress is 8.2 and uh, sdv3 is very uh, interesting thing this is a damage variable state variable 3 is damage variable and uh, again this also will be zero damage will be zero initially and damage will keep on increasing as time is progressing 
so you can see the step time here and uh, after element has reached its critical damage value failure will start to happen you can see one element missing already and uh, based on the temperature and stress values of each integration point elements start deleting uh, indicating that uh, the material will start to fail or crack will start to happen in the same portion uh, so towards the end of uh, more than 20 hours you can see how the damaged blade looks like